afternoon, everyone. We're so excited to be here at JMC Gross um, as today we start the rollout of Rec and Park opportunities and expanding our facilities and improving our facilities. And we're so excited to see you all here today. So excited to see our mayor here who will be sharing words in just a few minutes. But we know none of these projects is possible without the support of our community, um, our staff, our designers, and our contractors. So you'll hear from pretty much everyone here shortly. But without further ado, I'm sorry, can we get this meeting started in this uh, press conference with Mayor Scott coming to share a few words? Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is so glad, I'm so glad to be back home in Park Heights and back home at J.D. Gross or at James D. Gross for those who are not from Park Heights, it's translate for everyone else. Uh, in the rec center that I spent so much time as a young man. Uh, I'm pleasure to be here with our community leader, Ms. Spence. Thank you, ma'am, for welcoming me back, back home to Park Lane. Uh, but we know how important rec centers and recreation and parks are to our communities and to our residents. And uh, thank you all for being here as we talk about another great win for our city. I gave a preview of what was to come during my State of the City address, and here we are today uh, talking about the manifestation of our words, our plans, and most importantly, our investments. We're here in Park Lane uh, to kick off the long overdue uh, renovations at JD Gross Rec Center, something that we all can be excited about. Who's excited about renovation of rec centers? I want to start off by acknowledging our, our, our fabulous uh, Rec and Parks Director, uh, Director Reggie Moore and his entire team at Rec and Parks who have been diligent about how we can modernize our facilities, how we can modernize op our operations, and really the entire Department of Recreation and Parks and the folks that have put this, uh, uh, I give the money, they put it to great use, but really put out the plans and very thoughtful work in the community so how we're going to change a Rec and Parks for the future. So let's give them a big round of applause to the entire team at Rec and Parks. Although she couldn't be with us, as they have a city council meeting going on right now today, I want to acknowledge our fabulous council vice president, Sharon Middleton, who is a staunch supporter of BCRP, and in particular, this rec center, and of course, the neighborhoods of Park Heights, uh, because she understands and knows how important uh, this area, this center is for us as we continue to put on what we know will be a bold new Park Heights uh, for us all. We are in the midst of what we are calling our rec rollout which is the rollout of our plans to renovate several rec centers across the city as we begin then roll them out in the coming weeks. This is how uh, we are ushering in a new era in recreation, one that is equipped with high quality state of art facilities and services that benefit the overall well-being of our residents. We know uh, that our rec centers are much uh, more than a place to just exercise or play. They also help to educate community members, build self-esteem, enhance social relationships, and improve interpersonal skills. And most importantly, uh, these centers serve as a safe space where our residents can spend their time productively and feel free to be themselves. Uh, the James D. Gross, J.D. Gross Rec Center, originally named Edgecombe Circle Rec Center, as when my mom went here, was dedicated in the memory of James D. Gross in 1976. Uh, Mr. Gross served this community for many years and was also a mainstay at this particular rec center. Many members of this community continue to exhibit Mr. Gross' spirit of service and have worked tirelessly to obtain the necessary resources to update this rec center and preserve his legacy. I am proud uh, not only to be a witness, but a particip participant in this community's hard work and dedication. We are committed to investing in projects like this through a lens of equity and inclusion. And that's why, I, in addition to several upgrades at this rec center, I am pleased to announce that this will also be an ADA compliant facility so that everyone can come and enjoy themselves here. So we're gonna have an ADA ramp, ADA toilet room, new entry ramp, vestibule, flooring, ceiling, windows, restroom, storefront doors, upgrading the arts and craft and the other game rooms in this facility. Uh, and by the way, those facilities look exactly the same today as they did when I uh, was a young man attending this rec center after school. So it's far, far, far overdue. 
And I'm very excited today to get to bust down the wall versus throw somebody into the wall as a young man. Uh, as we move forward with the program and break ground on this project, we can do so uh, knowing that we are addressing the needs of our neighbors and investing in the things that they care most about in their communities. Again, time and time again, if you go and ask residents of Baltimore what we should be invested in, they say recreation centers. They say rec and parks. So we are doing that and doing that in a way that we haven't in Baltimore, at least in my lifetime and dare I say ever before. I want to say congratulations to Ms. Spence and the entire Parkland community for working with us to secure the necessary funding to commence renovations on this building, which has been a true asset to our community since its opening. I look forward to uh, returning to see the project upon its completion as we work to move forward with Baltimore and Park Heights moving forward together. Now it is my distinct honor in welcoming our fabulous community leader of the Park Lane Community Association, Ms. Spence, up to the microphone for a few words, ma'am. Y'all gonna have to forgive me. I know protocol, I really do. But can you all help me for just one second before I read what I have to say, because I didn't want to forget anything. Can you all just say, level up! Level up! Level up! Level up! Level up, Park Lane, level up! <laughs> We made that cry five years ago. I think it was about five or six years ago. And that has been what we have been saying for the past few years. All of Park Lane, all of Park Heights, all of the city, we've got to level up. And it's starting right here at J.D. Gross Recreation Center. I can barely hold it together, but I'm going to go back to protocol. I said, I won't feel bad because the mayor read his comments and I didn't want to forget mayor, so I'm going to read mine. I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm going to read mine. I first of all want to say welcome to all of you. Welcome to Park Lane. Welcome to J.D. Gross Recreation Center. We are so excited. Welcome to the old J.D. Gross. And in just a little bit, we want to welcome you back to the new and improved J.D. Gross Recreation Center. Will you all come back at that time and celebrate with us? All right, here we go. Oh, my name is Sharon Spence, and we already told you that. And I'm the president of Park Lane Neighborhood Association. On behalf of the association, I would like to say thank you to our mayor, Brandon M. Scott, for his full support of recreation centers throughout Baltimore City, not just here, but throughout Baltimore City. To Director Reginald Moore, Executive Director, Recreation and Parks, President of the City Council, Nick J. Mosby. I also want to stop to thank former Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young for signing off on the initial $300,000 PCDA lottery funds for the renovation of J.D. Gross Recreation Center. Along with the chair of the Pimlico Community Development Authority, better known as PCDA, Christopher Chris Ryer for submitting our initial request Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton for pushing for us to receive the community uh, grant, along with Will Hanna for agreeing to withdraw his PCDA request for funding for this project. He withdrew. He said he would rather that we had it. So I want to say thank you to him. Also, the community Park Heights Community Development in support of Park Heights receiving the grant funding for J.D. Gross and a special thanks and shout out to Maryland State 
Senator Antonio Hayes. I don't know if he's here or not yet, but I certainly want to thank him who fought for us, stood in the gap, and pushed for us to get an additional $300,000 in state funding for the project. I would also like to thank Yolanda Jiggins. She may not be here. We were in the same meeting. <laughs> so she may be running a little bit late. But the director of Park Heights Renaissance, Clifford Slater, director of James D. Gross Recreation Center, and all of the members of Park Lane Neighborhood Association. Woo woo! <laughs> Y'all excuse me. Um, who stood with me in the fight to get funding for renovations here. Last but not least, thanks to all of those at Baltimore City Rex and Parks for all the hard work, funds, and help that you provided to make this all happen. And again, I say thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, all of you. And can you just say, level up? Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Thank you, Ms. Spence. And next, we have to bring up the person that is going to make this a reality for us. We have Kevin Binsky here with Binsky Construction. Kevin. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> it is a great pleasure to be here for the groundbreaking ceremony of the James D. Gross Recreation Center. Over three generations, Bensky Construction has had the privilege <clears throat> of working with Baltimore <clears throat> and working towards the betterment of our city. Every project that we have completed with Baltimore Rec and Parks has brought a positive impact on our community and given our team immense pride and hope for the future of the city. As we embark on the renovation of the James Gross Recreational Center, we anticipate a space where the youth of the city can come together, they can be empowered, and they can promote a positive social change. We would like to thank Mayor Scott, Director Moore, the City of Baltimore for investing in our city's future and for granting us this opportunity to provide our support. I thank you. All right, we're so, so, so excited to be here. I love being at groundbreakings of ribbon cuttings, right? Because I know we're making significant impact and change in our communities. And a lot of this is not possible without having a strong leadership that believe in the agency's vision. And our vision is simply says, building a strong community, one community at a time through conservation, health and wellness, and social equity. And to share that vision and then have a mayor like Mayor Scott who supports us, the council president Mosby who supports it, and all the council members, it goes a long way. But none of this again is possible if we don't have the Park Lane Association. If we don't have communities that are passionate and committed to their rec spaces or their parks and, and that's continuously bringing this to our attention. Also, I can have all divisions in the world, right? But you have to have a strong team that supports you. And I, I just cannot be here doing the things I'm doing without the support of all of my uh, rec staff throughout our agency from our capital team to our marketing and communication team who makes these events possible and successful to our recreation staff so that when these realities, when these things become realities and we improve these spaces, it is then our recreation team that has to make sure that we work with the community to continue to move forward. So truly excited. Currently, Rec and Park manages over 50 recreation centers in the city of Baltimore, and we're so excited about the improvements that are on the horizon here at James D. Gross Recreational Center. The mayor kind of spoke earlier about the, the ADA improvements. Uh, he spoke about the multipurpose room. Uh, but one of the things that I want to highlight also is the improvement of our kitchen. Right? We have to make sure that our spaces is, is user friendly and by improving those spaces is beneficial for the community, makes it more efficient for our community use. So just wanted to highlight that one um, additional area. 
at Park and Recreation, we're constantly in communication with our neighbor, neighborhood leadership so that we have a true assessment of community recreational needs. It is a beautiful thing when our elected official partners, residents, staff, and other stakeholders are fully invested in our improvements of recreational spaces. I am thrilled of our team partnership with the state and the Park Lane Neighborhood Association, the PCDA, for an investment that's totaling nearly $700,000 to an improvement to a much needed recreational center. And I know James, not James, I'm sorry, Cliff, <laughs> They come to the center, but Cliff is extremely excited for these improvements. We're grateful that our partners and our stakeholders share our vision of providing top-notch amenities to our community. Working to upgrade these major community assets shows that the city is truly committed to providing its neighbors, its residents, the best in recreation and to building a better Baltimore. This is the first step, as the mayor said. We have Chick Well coming up soon. We have Ambrose Kennedy Pool. We have. Um, Park Heights, not Park Heights, um, Park View, geez. Just to name a few. And as me and the mayor was talking, we have our Myers Sports Pavilion that is getting a replacement turf field that's been needed for many, many years. So we're gonna be having many of these, and so I'm just thankful for our mayor and our commitment. So at this time, I'm gonna bring our mayor back, so in case there's any additional questions. Thank you, Director Moore. And before I take questions again, I want to th thank all of our partners in government, the Council President, uh, Senator Hayes, uh, everyone that's worked with us to make this a reality. But if you didn't hear uh, from the Director, I'll say it again, this is just the beginning, right? We have J.D. Gross, uh, we, we have Ambrose Kennedy Pool, we have Parkview Rectional, we have the Myers uh, Pavilion, and we're gonna continue to roll these investments out across the city of Baltimore so that everyone in neighborhoods across the city can see that there's a new day of investing in recreation and parks, uh, something that is long, long overdue. And with that, before we get to busting up the wall, we'll take any questions. Keith, I know you had some. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this, as you know, you've said this and many other people have said, it's stuff like this, things like this. Uh, that's part of your crime reduction plan regarding youth. You're pouring millions into redeveloping rec centers, playgrounds, public pools, but I'm still sure that you could use some help from residents and other people, including state legislatures, uh, the, the legislators in Annapolis. What do you want to see from those legislators in terms of help for your youth crime fight? I think that, that what I would say to you, Keith, is that uh, we're doing this in partnership. This facility that you and I are in today is a partnership with our state partners. And we're talking about the state of Maryland committing uh, $10 million in program open space funding for recreation and parks. We're just looking to keep expanding that working relationship, expanding that investment as we work together to, to deal with the issues that we have, right? Where you do not see me complaining. Uh, what we want to do is how do we make that partnership that is very strong even stronger and we know now having leadership uh, at the top level in Annapolis that really believes in Baltimore that we'll be able to expand on that. But we always know that there's going to be room for improvement and more things for us to work on together. Absolutely. In terms of legislation this past session, did you see enough? What did you want to see? In well, I guess, I, I guess Keith, what, what I would say is I know that uh, folks like to try to oversimplify things, right? And uh, folks send you here with questions to ask that oversimplify things. But let's be very clear about this. Uh, we had a very successful session. We did that as a city we did. Uh, we know folks, we had laws that are passed, but not one piece of legislation is gonna change what's happening. We're talking about how we can work in the, to the completeness to deal with those issues. But there's one piece of legislation that uh, you and I have talked about before that I hope actually passes next year. What was one of our package that, that didn't make it through, and that's dealing with home monitoring in the state of Maryland, not just in Baltimore City. Making it so that uh, when you are supposed to be in a certain place and you're not where you're supposed to be, that there's an automatic notification and automatic action taken uh, that's able to be taken. Right now, that doesn't happen. The state doesn't allow for that to happen. We had legislation that would allow that to happen, that would allow police officers, not just in Baltimore, but across the state of Maryland, to impact arrests because 
Uh, we should not see people. I should not go on crime scenes to see someone dead with an ankle bracelet on, right, if, if the state's supposed to be monitoring them. We are grateful to the folks uh, in the House that we were able to pass that through the House, and we're very hopeful that we'll be able to do that on the Senate side next year, and we're going to keep going and working with them, working with the governor, to make sure that these changes happen. Yes, sir. Hey, thank you, Mayor Scott. So, Hold on, I'm going to turn you up, man. <laughs> Keith talks a little louder than you, so it's humming. You're good. So uh, am I good now? Yeah, you're good. You're good. All right. you're good so Keith touched on this a little bit, but rec center is obviously playing a huge role. Oh, I'm sorry. And where are you from? Where am I from? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, uh, Channel 2. 2. All right, good. Sorry. Um, so rec centers obviously play a large role in uh, your youth engagement strategy, as you mentioned, yep. in your uh, State of the City last month. Um, I'm wondering uh, what the catalyst is to bring young, to physically get young people into the rec centers that you're pouring all this time and money into uh, is there anything specific that City Hall can do that you can do so a couple of things that we do that one I, if you can see all the folks in the front row start smiling because people that know in Baltimore you don't have to struggle to get kids in Baltimore to go to rec centers right like this building is attached to a school they literally walk out of the school walk around the corner and they walk right in this walk right in this door I myself went here uh, and I went to another school down the street my daycare facility would literally drop me off here after school to make sure I'm here but we're going even above and beyond that and you'll be seeing that in the coming future in the coming weeks as we roll out our summer engagement plan we'll be talking about how we're going on social media and targeting things to young people we always have a specific website that we will be rolling out again as summer comes up for young people and their families so they can see the programs that are available for them. We'll be sending messages out to folks. We'll be working with our school system to get the messages out to them, the students and their parents before they go home to school. Text messages, every single thing that we can do to make sure that we, we get young people in. And we don't have a problem with that. If, if my memory serves me correct, Director Moore, our um, summer camp slots are all taken already, already gone. We don't have any more. And we're, we're more than a month away from schooling out in the city of Baltimore. What we have a need for is for us to make sure the facilities that we have are up to standard for our young people and our families. And that's what this investment is doing. And, and when you talk about the larger ones that we're building, we're also expanding our capacity to have more uh, uh, young people and families participate. Last question here. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, since this all ties in, uh, you've been working on you know the city curfew plan uh, and making sure kids have a safe place to go. You said it at the very beginning, a safe space to be. Um, is there any anything you can speak to regarding that about how? Yep, uh, I'll say what I said last week. Uh, we will be updating you guys on the plan right as we as we get ready to roll that out, and we'll be doing that in in the very near future. But. Just know that recreation and parks, all of our agencies are going to play a part in that as well, just as we did with the Squeegee Collaborative, building off of that success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Spence, I believe these are yours, man. So now with the conclusion, we're going to ask Ms. Spence and Kevin and the mayor to join me um, as we officially start the construction by uh, having some fun with the wall behind us. As the mayor shared with me as he came in, he says, now I don't have to throw somebody in the wall. I get to actually bang the wall and bust the wall with a sledgehammer. So please join us in that excitement, please. <laughs> 